Here, I met Kenny and Jordan, twin boys. Kenny is your typical class clown, always speaking out of turn, unruly, loud, and craves attention, even if it's negative. Jordan, on the other hand, is quiet as a mouse. He sits, he listens, and he never fails to show respect. He's sweet and compliant. From this, one can infer that Kenny attracts most of the attention, whether it's at school, at home, or even at Cornerstone Kids. Kenny seeks the spotlight, good or bad. Now, where does that leave Jordan? Jordan is left being viewed as the good one. The good one quietly complies, never wanting to cause trouble. As a result, the good one is most likely overlooked or ignored, passed over, thought to be doing just fine on his own. But that is not the case. Being the good one reinforces to an individual like Jordan to believe that their thoughts and behaviors aren't as important. It is difficult to participate and feel a sense of belonging. It is lonely. What does the future hold for Jordan, a compliant, quiet child who passively follows without feeling significant? And what does the future hold for Kenny, a disruptive, unruly child seeking attention and belonging? Through our weekly community building sessions at Cornerstone Kids, I've challenged Jordan. Leading a transition breathing exercise, or giving himself a compliment, or receiving compliments from others and sharing activities, the so-called good one developed a voice of his own. The Teens in Action program has taught Jordan that he has a full range of emotions that he can acknowledge and openly communicate with others. It has taught him that he is heard and validated. Something as easy as asking how he is feeling today immediately makes him eager to converse. And what about Kenny? He wants to be heard and validated too. Kenny had a lot to say, and my encouragement to him to share his feelings respectfully opened him up to a new kind of caring and positive attention. We gave him words to express himself, and he also felt a sense of warmth and belonging. The need to act out for attention was gone, and we all benefited from his natural wit and charisma. All children need to feel emotionally safe and socially connected to learn and grow. Our weekly visits gave them new tools that equipped them to manage their emotions for their best success. And for me, there is nothing more joyful. Now I've changed too. Learning to listen and process before reacting emotionally. Recently, I was in a situation where my dad had a strong opinion <laughs> about what I should do, <laughs> which meant his opinion was right. <laughs> And I did not agree at all. Ninth grade Maggie would have exploded. But this Maggie, with my newly acquired emotional management skills, was able to listen, to breathe, absorb, breathe, process, <laughs> breathe, and calmly say, I love you, I hear you, and I will take your thoughts under consideration. I don't think we will agree on this but I still love you and appreciate your caring. Now, isn't this what we all want? A world where we are heard and validated, where we can share and build healthy relationships and resolve conflicts and make decisions that are right for us, always respecting that others may disagree, but that they can still find many things to agree on that preserve the relationship. New Maggie has convinced old Maggie that she now has all the skills she needs to do just that, and the future is very bright. I hope that you all consider a donation to support this work that leads to lifelong change and opportunity. Your generous donation will allow the kids in our community to continue to reap the benefits of SEL. Please, now take a few moments to complete the ask card on your table and place it in the center vase. Be sure to take your framework's stress heart with you. Your generosity today will be matched one-to-one -one by the Triad Foundation, up to 75,000. And don't forget your delicious cake pop. They are one of my favorites. And after all, part of emotional intelligence is treating yourself. Thank you.